Now we come to time series proper. So we first start with AR1 process. So this AR stands for auto regressive process and this one is the lag. So this is first order auto regressive process. So one stands for this yt minus one. So yt that is the value of this variable now depends upon the past variable multiplied by some constant phi you add to it some constant and then some random variable or error so this epsilon t is error so this epsilon t is normally distributed say with mean 0 and variance sigma square now for our simulation we are always going to take this epsilon as normally distributed as 0 1 but you can make appropriate changes in the code to incorporate some other variance so what you get in uh, AR1 process is a series of variables so you start with y1 so y1 is as such so this is the first variable then you get y2 so y2 you get you multiply y1 with some constant then you add some constant c to it and then you add this error then you come to y3 so now you have computed y2 because you know y1 this constant is given to you and for our simulation we'll take this constant 0 but you can add any number you feel like and this uh, e1 is nothing but a random variable which you have chosen from this n01 so this you choose so basically you ask the machine to give you a random variable from this normal distribution with mean 0 and variance 1 or you can say mean 0 and variance sigma square so once you get y2 then you get y3 now I should write epsilon 3 here and epsilon 2 here and so on you know you can continue with this process so you just need to start with y1 and then if you are given a constant and another error you can keep summing it up and uh, making a time series process so time series is nothing but a bunch of values given to you you are given as value y1 then you get y2 from there you get y3 and so on and you are given this c and you are drawing this error so first thing is we want to talk about this phi so this phi we want to talk about so there are three cases concerned with this phi the first is that the value of phi is 1 so we we are taking the positive value or modulus of this phi is 1 and in this case it is a unit root and this will need special treatment so this we will come in the later lectures so mostly we are concerned with this absolute value of phi being less than 1 in this case the series becomes covariance stationary so we will uh, talk about this covariance stationary or weekly stationary in a minute and if this phi is greater than 1 then the process has no bounds so then the process just uh, goes up or goes down and it is not uh, relevant to uh, for us to analyze the process because if the process does not have any bound it could go up to infinity or go down to minus infinity then you don't have anything essential to say about the process in the long run in the long run it you just do not have anything logical to say about it it is just out of bounds so this is the primary case we are concerned with right now and later on we will talk about this case also so this is the most interesting case here you cannot say anything because it, it could go to plus infinity or it could go to minus infinity in the long run and so that is it so if you try to solve a process like this mathematically you can find its expectation so expectation or the mean of this time series this is y1 y2 y3 and so on all these variables is nothing but c over 1 minus phi and uh, these two moments so this you can say as the variance so once you calculate mu from here you plug it in here calculate the expectation of this you get sigma square over 1 minus phi square and then you can uh, you have this gamma i and this gamma i is nothing but lag so yt you are comparing it with the with series which is lagged i to it so so you could say gamma 1 is when you are finding expectation of yt minus mu 
and then you have y t minus 1 minus mu and then you can similarly find gamma 2 in gamma 2 instead of t minus 1 you have t minus 2 and so on so all these expectation uh, operators I have explained in my lectures in probability where I have actually given the formula for expectation and how to compute expectations so since this is an applied course I'm just giving you the values here so notice that this gamma i has sigma square phi i over 1 minus phi square so such a process is called weakly stationary or covariant stationary because this and this there is no time here so you don't have t here this is just c over 1 minus phi there is no t here this is sigma square over 1 minus phi square there is no t here this is sigma square times phi to the power of i over 1 minus phi square again no time here so this first and second movement do not depend upon time so now notice on this expression yeah focus on this expression so notice that we are focused on this process number two that phi is less than one so that means as i goes to infinity this expression phi i will go to zero and that means this gamma i will become zero because sigma square is constant and 1 minus phi square is constant so the sigma square comes from here the sigma square your assumption on the error so this is constant this phi is fixed to for you this is constant that means gamma i is 0 so that means this uh, covariance between y t and y t minus i the covariance between these two becomes 0 so the covariance between these two becomes 0 this formula is for covariance so this is covariance essentially between y t and y t minus i so that means that after lag of i if i is too long and uh, so here i is just one and i is just two so if you have a time series which is say thousand values long and if i is something like hundred so this means that uh, the series which is at hundred now has no resemblance to say series which is at thousand so the covariance becomes zero so that is why it is called covariance stationary yeah because this phi i goes to zero so this covariance tends to zero when this phi keeps on going to uh, this i keeps on going to infinity now we will uh, write an example on how to simulate this in r so the example we are going to try to simulate is y of t is 0 0.9 times y t minus 1 plus this epsilon t now here I'm going to take epsilon t lying in n 0 1 so we will do 100 simulations so this is arima dot sim that is this auto regressive and this uh, ma is moving average so this is a combination of auto regressive and moving average but here we are just doing auto regressive so we are doing arima dot sim n equals to 100 means that we are going to draw from uh, we are going to get a vector of size 100 the components are going to be y1 y2 y3 so we are going to get 100 values then you put list ar is 0.9 this is the 0.9 coefficient ar is 0.9 so if you had 0.8 here you put 0.8 here if you have minus 0.5 here you put minus 0.5 here so this innovation is this epsilon t r norm 100 means we are drawing 100 values and uh, since i have not put comma anything that means it is coming from 0 1 so if you want a different random variable which is coming from a different distribution then you can say r norm 100 and then you put your own mean and variance so you say your mean is 5 and variance is 2 you put that here so i am writing this r norm 100 means coming from 0 1 so this will give you 100 values then we are going to plot this then we will see this auto correlation function and auto correlation function means that how yt is compared with yt minus 1 then we will see how yt is compared with yt minus 2 then how yt is compared with yt minus 3 the graph will make it clear then we talk about this partial auto correlation function the partial auto correlation function will show that this yt just depends upon yt minus 1 and after if you take yt minus 1 out completely 
then yt does not depend upon anything else then uh, this layout is nothing but uh, it will help us lay out all three of these graphs in a single graph so first is uh, we just plot y this y the time series so this is the same as this then autocorrelation function partial autocorrelation function so this is same acf here this is same pacf here this main autocorrelation is nothing but i am just uh, labeling the graph this is also labeling the graph so these three plots acf and pacf are same as this but it is good to see it in a proper layout uh, once i show you the code in r it will be more clear so let us see this in r so you open a new script copy this from the description of the video so we first run this command here the first first of our commands select it and you run it so you have y you can type y here to see um, what have you gotten so you see that you have a lot of values we are just seeing the uh, first few values here so start is 1 end is 100 and uh, you see 97 then you have 98 9900 so this is the 97th value is minus 3.66 so you got 100 values here now we are going to plot the time series you select it hit the run button and you get this time series plot so you see 100 values we have so this is the time series then we uh, do the autocorrelation hit the run button so see this is the autocorrelation so yt is related to yt with one because obviously every variable is uh, related to itself uh, autocorrelated so this is nothing but correlation function and obviously every variable is correlated to itself with one so this is one so this is yt with yt minus one this is yt compared to yt minus two this is yt compared to yt minus three and see how it is decaying so it is decaying down then you have partial autocorrelation function this is very important for autoregressive processes so you will see the graph now so this is the partial autocorrelation function you can see partial acf written here so the you see this value seems to be coming out but we can ignore this we can take values with high significance so the high significance value is lag one so you see this lag one value is very highly significant that means that our process itself is uh, it shows that there is a lag on y t minus one and that is what our simulation was our simulation was there was a lag there was a single lag of 0 0.9 and that is what this lag is here so you can simulate this again and then again uh, run the partial autocorrelation function and you see again uh, now I simulated this again that's why this graph looks uh, different than the previous graph so again this value was in the opposite direction it it came here now so uh, basically you run it multiple times and then you will see that this uh, value here is the most significant one the first lag so make maybe let us make it 500 and that will make it more clear uh, the more simulations we have the better probably it is in fact better it is so I will run this graph first and uh, you run this and then we do its uh, partial autocorrelation you run this so see now it is very clear all these other values are inside so after we have simulated 100 times uh, 500 times now instead of 100 you see that the significance is only in the first level and that goes with our graph so AR of 0.9 uh, because our graph when we simulated uh, we simulated as uh, dependence on the first variable of 0.9 now I'm going to make a very important point and you need to uh, remember this the idea is this so inst instead of simulating this graph you could have added any values here so suppose you are given commodity prices of copper now you can add commodity prices here and then you draw its partial autocorrelation function now the partial autocorrelation function will show you what variables are dependent so here is only first is dependent so if second is also there it will come up and uh, this we will see more in AR2 but partial autocorrelation function tells you these lines which are coming out tell you 
which are the dependent variables uh, how many independent variables are needed from the past so here there is only one significant line that means only one variable is needed from the past so yt is to be simulated on yt minus one now we uh, you again we have all these three graphs which i'm going to run again uh, basically just copying plot acf and pacf just in one uh, go so you just run this and now we have all three graphs here so now you can see you know this random walk let me make this graph slightly bigger so this is the walk here now you have sample size of 500 uh, because I have the sample size of 500 here and then you have this autocorrelation and then partial autocorrelation functions 